Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux Newslog is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Uh, starting off over at ZDNet in the... Um, I just forgot what I was going to say. Uh, over in Enterprise Software, uh, there's a uh, post from Stephen J. Von Nichols uh, in the Linux and Open Source section, why Linux Mint is a worthwhile Windows XP replacement. Uh, in this article, now we reported last episode that Microsoft is cutting support for Windows XP. There's a bunch of uh, outfits that are looking at using some Linux distribution uh, to replace uh, Windows XP because it won't be supported anymore and they, they can't stay on XP, at least not uh, long term. So uh, this article starts off with a few things that, that are, you know, might actually be a good replacement candidates in uh, Linux Mint. So I thought this was a good article. I, I you know, I, I'm recommending that everybody else uh, check it out. It's, it's a pretty good write, write up of uh, what you know, what, uh, you know, the, the redeeming value of it and why you should try it out. And, uh, you know, if you're still on uh, Windows XP and you want to get off Windows XP, definitely uh, give this article a read. It's, it's a pretty nice write-up. From TechCrunch, Max, Max Thon, that is really hard for me to say, Max Thon releases its first browser for Linux. That's right. Uh, Maxthon has released its first cloud browser for Linux. The release is partly in response to requests from Maxthon's users, but also because the open source operating system has become speedier, says Carl Matson, the company's vice president. If people haven't taken a look at Linux for a while, they should take a second look because it's a great product. The chorus of people emailing us asking for Linux has gotten a lot louder. He adds that Maxthon for Linux has a bigger feature set than the company usually includes in browsers when they launch for the first time on an operating system, including Magic Fill, an AES 256 level encrypted password and user account prompt, and mouse gestures, which let users execute browser commands by making a gesture with their mouse. So pretty cool. Um, I'm not a huge Maxthon user, but uh, I've heard of it and you know, figured for those of you who out there who, who may want who may be looking um, for something a little different to uh, give it a try. From Muckedware, is Windows 8 update deleting the Linux bootloader? What? That's right. A Linux and Windows 8 user has reported on Reddit that one of the updates performed by Microsoft's OS, Windows 8 deleted the Grub bootloader and set UEFI to secure boot. This is bad if this is actually true. Uh, it was not Windows 8 to Windows 8.1 upgrade, but regular Windows 8 system update. He claims that after the Windows system update, Grub 2 was removed and UEFI booting was set to secure boot, which it wasn't prior to the update. During the update, Windows 8 mentioned there is a security problem with your computer that needs to be fixed. And I'm using air quotes here for those of you who are uh, listening to the show and not watching the show. Uh, when the user contacted the Microsoft support, he did not get a satisfactory reply. He also said that Microsoft support representative also made the following statement. Microsoft updates make sure the uh, Windows 8 functions fine. It does not look at other OS's integrity, which technically you can't really expect it to, but um, kind of unsettling. We'll be keeping an eye on this just to see what happens. Um, but I am curious to see, uh, you know, wh what, what comes of this. From IT Wire, SUSE is releasing a module patch to a running kernel. Uh, they've released the code for KGraft. It's a module which can be used to patch a running Linux kernel. This is pretty awesome. Um, 
The head of the company's kernel development, Volchek Pavlik, said in a media release, originally a research project from SUSE Labs, Haygraft has quickly shown its promise as a live patching Linux tool for enterprise users. We all know in the enterprise you cannot always bring a system down to patch it for you know security issues and that sort of thing. Sometimes you just you can't bring the system down and and or you can but you have to schedule it and you know it, it takes like three to six months to, to even get an install window of like a half an hour so uh pretty interesting definitely uh look into this if this is something you need uh, unfortunately you may have to actually restart your system and bring the system down to get this module installed and and working and all that but uh once it's there you can patch your system without actually bringing your system down, which is kind of cool. From bostonglobe.com, Red Hat ends on a high but cools on its outlook. The Linux software has ended its fiscal year on a high note with fourth quarter net income exceeding street expectations. The company's revenue rose 15% to $400 million U.S., pushing revenue for the year to $1.53 billion U.S. That's pretty good. Uh, net income for the quarter was $75 million, up from $70 million a year ago. So despite these, re these results, however, pretty good results, Red Hat shares have declined, probably because the company's first quarter earnings guidance first quarter earnings guidance fell below analyst expectations. Well, you know, you win some, you lose some. I don't know what else to say. I mean, this is a reality of life. From uh, AndroidHeadlines.com, HTC keeps its promises, releases Android 4.4.2 kernel sources for all variants of the HTC One. Pretty cool. Uh, HTC, according to the article here, has a strange relationship with developers who believe in modifying the device's software to help it attain its true potential. This is where a kernel comes into play. Specifically speaking, once a kernel is released by the device's OEM, developers get their hands on much needed codes and drivers which they can tweak as per their needs and provide us with those wonderful custom ROMs that we love flashing onto our devices. Uh, HTC has demonstrated their commitment toward software updates in the swift manner. The HTC One got a global update to the latest and greatest Android iteration, 4.4.2 KitKat. And in the latest information from HTC, they have released the kernel code for Android 4.4.2 KitKat for last year's flagship, the HTC One. So, pretty awesome. Definitely check this out, especially if you are an HTC user. From hostreview.com, Verizon Terramark joins the Linux Foundation as a gold member. Uh, Pretty neat. The Linux Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to accelerating the growth of Linux and collaborative development, today announced that Verizon Terramark is joining the organization as a gold member. The company joins existing Linux Foundation gold members China Mobile, Cisco, Citrix, ETRI, Google, Hitachi, Huawei, NetApp, uh, NYSE Technologies, uh, Panasonic, SUSE, and Toyota. So, pretty awesome. It's good news. Uh, that will do it for this edition of the Geekinator, as, or Linux News Log, I should say. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. You can find those online over at quicksurf.com. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, the show notes are uh, down here below the video uh, in the show notes section. So with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.